The sound of a wind chime. The sound of a glass wind chime. A sound I've been hearing long before I even gained any understanding of my surroundings. It was the one and only thing left to me by my grandfather. Even my grandfather, who was aesthetic towards material possessions, treasured it dearly. That very chime was also what spurred my interest in glass. Such a nostalgic sound. But this sound... Just a ring. Is it related to something? Something very, very important. But I can't remember it at all. Ring, ring. Ah, that's right. That wind chime. One day, the cord on the wind chime came loose, causing it to fall and shatter. I had almost forgotten the shock I felt that day. Ring, ring. Yes. I desperately gathered its shards and tried to piece it back together. For hours and hours, I kept trying and trying to repair the broken chime. Fragments that were too small for me to find, I created using mana craft. It was the first time in my life that I created glass using mana craft. But it wasn't the right colour. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get the same colour. It always ended up changing. My grandfather's precious memories. I exhausted every single means and method I've heard of, even just in passing, trying to recreate that same blue-green colour. After three days, it finally resembles something like a wind chime. Oh. Even the colour looks similar enough to how it looked before it broke. But it never made the same sound as it had when it swayed with the wind. Pr sell lean What the? It... It's dark. But where is this place? Uh, so, we're back to seeing it from Ritona's world. Well, Ritona's perspective. It's so dark. Am I in space? Wait, no, that's not even possible. Think, think. Just what happened? Yes, I was chasing Sol down. We were right up to a dead end. And then, what happened? I can't remember. And, where am I? Hmm? Ah! The moment I try to get up, every joint in my body aches and creaks. It feels like a straw rope is rubbing against me. The sensation is dulling my senses and thoughts. This feels so, so repulsive. As if the blood flowing through my vein is thickening, con go can't say it, can't say it. <laughs> hmm? uh, on the other side of the room was another bed. On it was a young girl reading a book. Okay. Okay. Did she not notice my getting up? She's glancing this way. Though she seems to be uninterested, the girl sighs and turns her attention back to her book. Who is she? Um, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of your reading, but just what is this place? Aerotorum. After making that remark, she scowls and stares at me, eyes full of disdain. How shameful. Don't you have any pride in your own country's language? What? I'm taken aback for a moment. That's surprising. 
I didn't expect to come across anyone who could speak Cyan Ar- Oh god god Cyan Ar- Gizdan here In the Ruzin Heisen dialect no less Is this just a dream? Also just realising Kinda just floating about deep into the sea With rainbow lights coming out of those books on that desk is it customary to introduce yourself in your mother mother tongue? Suddenly talking with Aerotorum sure says a lot about how uninformed you are about manners. How long ago was that custom from? I stop myself from saying it mid-sentence. Only the elderly would be the kind to say something like that. It was a practice that conveyed great respect for the one you were speaking to. Oh, uh, is she gonna, gonna be someone who's like really old and only young because she's been in the Vita Street for God knows how long now? <laughs> that way, you can learn the other's greeting in their native language. But suffice to say, the custom became outdated with the introduction of Aero Ratum. I've heard that that custom before. It originated from within the Alliance, I believe. You're royalty, aren't you, you dirty little brat? Who's in hiding must be at the end of its rope with people like you at the helm. Excuse me? What did she just say? This is a joke, right? This it better damn well be. What she just said was so beyond rude that I can't construe it as anything but a crash joke. Do you have a chip on your shoulder or something? You've been doing nothing but picking a fight with me this entire time. This... This was... My room. She places a lot of emphasis on the was. You've been lying on that spot for three days already. Three days? I was unconscious for that long? She scowls at me again, as if cursing me for being for my being here. I I see. It looks like I've been intruding on a space the entire time. I've caused her trouble without realizing it. My apologies. Tell me to have stayed in your room without three days without as much as an introduction. Please do excuse me for my rudeness. The avoidable circumstances had me unconscious for quite a while, you see. Huh. Now for my long delayed introduction. Virocell, my name is Ratona. I extend my arm for a handshake. But it is completely ignored, as I expected. Oh, my apologies. I suppose you wouldn't want to touch the hand of this dirty little brat. Having been confined to subconsciousness for a whole three days, I'm sure I'm quite filthy by now. Ah, uh, I truly do apologize. I should have forcefully roused myself from my comatose state to take a proper bath. <laughs> You've taken a joke out of this Ratona. <laughs> really? What right did I have to lose my consciousness without even taking you into consideration, even though I've only learnt of your existence mere moments ago? <laughs> uh, I better start practicing clairvoyance to prevent any possible incidents of me causing trouble for you in the future. Fine, I got it. Mr. Rolf I am Paige. Oh, good God. I like the series, but damn these names. Damn these names. <laughs> I'm Paige Lowell Skell. Hell. Oh, as long as she calls herself Paige, I'll be fine. Probably not going to happen. <laughs> the girl Paige introduces herself and extends her hand. Welcome to my ward. My world. She smiles ever so slightly, the half sleepy look on her face. By the change in attitude, all of a sudden. Honestly, 
I was prepared for an even stronger rebuttal from you. I'm pretty fond of sarcasm, you see. Only, only someone with a sharp mind can hide the sharpness in their words. If you started panicking right there, uh, there, uh, there, I'd have you chased out. I hate scenes like that. Is that so? I didn't, uh, her, I didn't expect her to take a liking to that response. I also hate people who. Uh, I also hate people who are way too accommod too accommodating the first time around. People like that expect others to respect them just because they act that way. You didn't. I see. In that sentiment, I feel like I've understood the reason for Paige's polarizing personality. I somehow understand what she's trying to say. Back then, I also had that line of thought. But with my job as Royal Guard, came a need for a polite, amicable facade. One cannot survive in this world solely on the kind of brunk, blunt frankness. This oh, so this means she's a type to remain standoffish till she's assessed whether or not someone can be a friend, eh? She'll definitely hate nice people like Selfie and Rune right off the bat. Well, basically, she's quite the pain to deal with. Ugh. A wave of self-loathing hits me when I think about how I was just. Yeah, hits me when I think of how I was just like her back then. Ah, that's right. There was something I forgot to ask. What is it? You look so serious almost all of a sudden. If we're gonna keep so this conversation up, I want to clear something up. Clear something up? I am not royalty. I'm just a layman. Lay person. God, God damn it. <laughs> I'm just a lay person, a stray dog if you will, so call me dirty or filthy all you want. But I demand you take back any insults against my country and its nobility. I tell her this in an almost indifferent tone. Raising your temper against someone like Paige only means you've lost, but one still needs to stand their ground against her. It's important to draw the line, to make things clear. Uh, sure, it's not like I really meant it seriously. I'll take back those remarks. I knew it. Even with that attitude and manner of speaking of hers, she's not a bad person at heart. Probably. Alright, I think we can hold a proper conversation now. Strange. It's as if I can sense Paige's intentions. By the way, just where did you hear I was royalty? Hmm? The doctors call you a royal guardian. They know I'm a guardian? But who is this doctor she's talking about? Hmm. Wait Paige, what did you just say? The doctor called you a royal guardian. The pronunciation's off. It's guard, no, guardian, not guardian. <laughs> it also refers to my occupation, not my social status. Normally, one wouldn't make a misunderstanding like that. This has been on my mind the entire time. When did you learn to speak Sion Arjindan, Page? Hers is near. Fluency, but she's gotten some strange accents here and there. It's definitely not her native language. I can't. I couldn't imagine a situation where she'd have to use Cyan Gargantian all the way on the other side of the world, like here. The language is from a country so, so far away from here. How did you manage to learn it? That's because the doctor is from Rusen Heidi. I had him teach me. What? What? The one for Rusen Heidi? A doctor? It can't be. I is that doctor's name? Hey, Paige, you're there. 
Yes, Dr. Repu- Repika. You can come in any time. R- did you say Repika? You did, didn't you? <laughs> Preposterous. No, no, no. It's not completely out of question, but what are the chances? I thought I told you to drop the doctor bit. Oh, hmm? Eh, eh. This room had a door? A slender, middle aged man wearing a coat worn by years of use appeared from the middle of the darkness. A quick wonder word tells me he's somewhere in his 40s. The math adds up. This, this man, he really is. Vile, vile, oh god. Viles, you up already, Guardian? A lot faster than I expected. He speaks of a smooth, fluent, Saren Jarazjistan accent. Oh god. <laughs> I've had this talk about how fluent and smooth it, uh, smooth it is, and I'm like failing completely. <laughs> it's unmistakably his native language. Where, where is this place? Why was I abducted and brought here? You're abducted. You're a little off. Abducted isn't the right word. I didn't abduct you. I brought you here out of the goodness of my heart. Amazing as a doctor I am, you and I can't cure anyone from death. But what? The question you should actually be asking me is. Why did you go out of your way to save my life? Are you Rupika Gregus? I figured. If you know who I am, then that means you're from Ruzin Heide. Uh, answer me. Are you Rupika Gregus, the one who, ex- who was exiled from Ruzin Heide ten years ago? Just a little off again. I don't know what kind of ru- rumours are going around over there, but I chose to leave Ruz and Heidi. Not exiled. Got it. Th- that's just tri- triviality. What are you? What are you doing in a place like this? Huh. Well, uh, saving your life for one, I suppose. Now my turn to ask questions. You're a royal guardian, ain't you? Where's your escortee? Don't tell me someone like you. Don't tell me someone like you, like you's protected the likes of Allah, are you? I'm. I'm not a guardian. You're lying. I suggest you try to come up with more, with a, with a more believable fib next time. And just how can you be so sure I am? Where's your proof? Just one look at your mana craft signature tells me everything I need to know. A oh, fire of seal, a ruse and hide format. The ceremony of the kind of Ophia that lasts a long period, about two years. Nobody but a guardian would undergo that. When you try and forcefully strengthen someone's mana craft that much, their signature's going to have some of pretty obvious quirks. An average Joe from any country could easily tell. No way. No layperson could possibly infer all that just from a glance at a mana craft signature. Well, honestly, you and I doubted my eyes for a moment. I never expected to come across someone who underwent the or fear of zeal here. Oh boy. Are you trying to keep your guard up now? Come on, it's not like I'm going to eat you or anything. That would have happened whilst you were unconscious. <laughs> I just want to have a nice little chat, okay? Relax, relax. It's Princess Selfine. King Valhar is under the protection of someone else from the knights. You serious? Say, how old are you? Like 20 something? 19. 19? Hey Paige, she's the same age as you. Okay, that was okay, that early theory out the window. Never mind. Throw, throw it out. Just throw it out the window. Y- yes, so she is. A royal guardian at 19? That's crazy. 
I thought there was an age limit for tri crafters. I'm a jewel crafter. So you're a jewel crafter and you became a guardian? Pretty sure you had to be a member of the knighthood to be a guardian, and to be in the knighthood, you had to be a tri crafter. I was personally designated guardian by both King Valhar and Princess Selfine. I'm only a jewel crafter, but I was allowed to enlist as an honorary member of the knighthood. That, that's awfully nice of them, ain't it? You're the first ever archer. I surprised those guys let you in, considering they rather stick to regulation rather than reason. But then, that's kind of weird. What's the princess's royal guardian doing in a place like this? I thought a guardian was to, supposed to, you know, I don't, I don't know, guard the escorts. Where's Princess Selfine? She's currently in Rusenheide. I was relieved from my duties as guardian and decided to travel the world to forget my grief from that. Ah. Why do you insist on doing this the hard way? This hurts, you know. Do I really look like the bad guy here? And why do you think I'm lying? It makes even less sense for the princess to be on this side of the world. It takes a minimum of two years to get to this canter, and that's assuming you don't take any detours or run into any trouble. Counting back two years from your age puts your departure at about 17, 18 years old. The two year ceremony for your Ophir puts you at 15, maybe 16 years old. Unless you were fired as soon as you were assigned your position, the math doesn't add up. Don't tell me the princess is here, isn't she? Right here, in this canter. Is Valar here too? No. That's... It's a long story. I see. Okay then, let's hear it all. All of it. I've got all the time in the world. Well, I don't. I can't leave my companions to fend for themselves like this. I must get to looking for Selfine as soon as I can. I'm afraid that's not possible. Why? Because if you leave this room, you'll die. What? Well, technically, you'll die if you leave this facility, to be exact. In any case, I just can't up and you can't just up and leave. But what do you mean? You're not making any sense. I've been feeling pretty bad. You've been feeling pretty bad lately, haven't you? Have you thought of why you suddenly just collapsed out of nowhere? Well, I. You've been to the outer pole, haven't you? Not only that. You used some pretty draining, large-scale mana craft there. Ah. So just relax. Oh, it's because you used that... Heavy rain? Wasn't it? Something rain. Move on, uh... Oh god, I can't remember her name. I can't remember the name, but at the very beginning of the story when she used that mana craft. I messed Retona up. Well, unless you want... Of course, you want to die... Oh, wait. That's basically what any villain says, huh? 